Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Alexandra and today I am tackling a space I haven't tackled in a while. I am making over a dining nook. Are you guys ready? Let's get into the makeover. So this week's makeover recipient's name is Hannah, and I'm gonna jump on a call with her to see what's working in this space, what's not working, and what she really envisions for this little dining nook. Nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. Really, really excited to be taking on your space. Congrats for winning a makeover with us. Yeah, you have no idea how excited I was when I got that email. I was like, me? Me? I'm so glad. <laughs> so walk me through the nook right now. I know it's an office and I know you don't need it as an office. Yes. Walk me through the space and what you're kind of envisioning for it. We don't have a dining table. We just have like an island. Sitting in a stool is great, but like sitting at an actual chair with a backrest is better. Yeah. And we don't really have a place to like host people. So that's kind of what I was looking for too. I love to make cocktails. You know, dinner ended like hours ago and you're still at the dinner table kind of thing. So yeah, somewhere where I can do that with my friends and family would be great. So you don't need it as an office. You are not working from home anymore. No. So we can get rid of that entirely. You can totally get rid of it. Yes. And I know you have lots of books. I would love to incorporate that into the dining nook somehow. Yeah, definitely. That's awesome. And I feel like the inspo photos you submitted really actually lean into that comfy fabrics, dark moody colors. I like the dark colors because to me, it just means like, okay, super cozy, super like moody. Yeah, totally. It's also very different to the rest of the space. Like our apartment is pretty colorful and like light, I would say. And there's also no window in there. So might as well like play up to that and just make it a dark room, right? I totally agree. I'm really excited that you said the rest of your apartment is like bright and airy because I personally think it's so fun to have a nook or a corner in a tiny apartment that's like entirely different than the rest of the space. Yeah. It looks like the colors in the info images you pinned are like, they have like green undertones to them. Like they're like charcoal, but like skewing kind of more on the green side of things, which I love. Yeah, that's exactly the kind of color scheme I was going for, like dark neutral colors. I love different wood tones as well. You both rent, correct? Yes. So if we were to do some sort of like wall molding panel situation, would this have to be completely renter friendly? Like, have you talked to your landlord about doing something more permanent? Our landlord is good with anything that looks good. He just said, okay. if you're making it look better, by all means. Okay, that's awesome. We'd love to hear that. <laughs> I know, right? Well, actually, it was from watching your kitchen reno. I was like, oh, okay, so you asked your landlord and they were like, please go ahead. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna ask every landlord if I can do stuff now. Thank you for the permission. <laughs> yeah, that makes me so happy. And I feel like as long as like you give them a plan and tell them what you're gonna do, like our landlords came in and looked at the mood board and were like, what about this? What about this? But ultimately they were like, you're doing this whole thing by yourself, like go for it. Yeah. Okay, cool. This is really great. I feel like I have such a clear understanding of what needs to be done in this space. Is there anything else you want to add just before we end this call? Any questions you have? Anything? <laughs> <laughs> just excited for you to do whatever you do best. <laughs> cool. Well, I guess the next time I'll see you is on reveal day. Yay. Have a great day. You too. Nice to meet you. Bye, Hannah. Bye. So here's what I've learned about this space. Hannah lives with her partner, Amin, and this little den nook situation is just not functioning for their needs anymore. It was at one time a work from home space. They've both gone back to the office. And I feel like as most people can relate, it's just a space that's kind of underused. Hannah has visions of turning this into a dining nook, a place where she can host guests, a place just for her and Amin to be able to sit down together and eat dinner. And I'm really excited at the prospect of what this space could look like because it's quite a roomy space and really does have so much design potential. So let's talk through Hannah's inspo. Lots of dark and moody colors. There's almost a bench in every inspo photo she's pinned. A really kind of dramatic wall behind the table. I can really see this coming together. I wanna show you guys the mood board I have been working on based on these inspo photos. So I love this color. I was actually going to paint my PAX wardrobes this color and it didn't work out. It was too dark for my space. 
This color I've never used before. It's charcoal gray with these very subtle hints of green undertones. And the green undertones are kind of key here because I feel like it makes it a really dynamic and interesting color with lots of depth. I wanna do beadboard lining the whole back wall, a bench in front, maybe with added storage underneath. That would be amazing. I wanna do a really big statement pendant light, something you wouldn't necessarily expect for a tiny space like this. I definitely need to bring in a couple of shelves for storage and their books. I wanna play with pattern in this makeover. I want the bench seat cushions to be a very different pattern than the rug, but definitely the styles we're kind of working into this makeover are rustic farmhouse, modern design, and then more traditional elements. Kind of like pulling those all together to create a really dynamic and interesting space. The focal point of this makeover is definitely going to be that beadboard wall on the bench. I want the beadboard accent wall and the bench to span the entire width of the wall. And I also wanna have a shelf on top where I can prop art and other trinkets. So to prep, Graham is getting started on building the structure of this bench. Graham built the bench out of two by four dimensional lumber, quarter inch plywood for the front, and half inch MDF baseboards for the molding. Graham made the bench in two sections so we could transport it in an elevator and in our vehicles. So while Graham is working on the bench, Alana and I are going on a little shopping trip. We're going to try and thrift some beautiful vintage frames for the top of that beadboard ledge. So I am on the hunt for some gold vintage frames for the dining nook. I think they'll look really good against that dark wall. I actually kind of love the picture in here. So that wasn't the most successful. We did get one solid frame, but we're gonna head to HomeSense now, see if they have any frames. And I'm thinking we can always like rub and buff them or paint them to make them look uh, more vintage. So yeah, let's go to HomeSense. I'm beelining towards this. Do we need it? No. Do I love it? Yes. These could possibly work. I love the size of this one, but it's too like yellow gold. This could work. It's kind of like a brushed gold. Also, this is so good. It looks like the Mortar's map on Harry Potter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We want to make sure we are playing with height. I have to say, I love this oversized mat. Small photo situation. This is quite beautiful. So we're gonna just actually get the gold one and the wooden one. And then we're gonna look on Facebook Marketplace for like a big one like this, but for the gold frame. Okay, so we're done at HomeSense. We are zooming to another Value Village before our meeting at 4 p.m. in hopes of finding a big gold frame. Sorry, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to see how long you would, you would notice. Okay, fingers crossed. <laughs> Immediately spotted a gold frame but it's big. It's almost too big. Or could it work? Ooh. Okay, we hit the jackpot. Oh, look, they're it's all, Jesus. Yeah, they're all Jesus. All, the all big, of them are Jesus. Should we, I kind of feel like... I kind of love that a lot. Like, what a beautiful frame. Okay, we got a good haul. This one's by far my favorite. And then we have the wood and the other gold one. This is a vibe. So I am at the office today. Graham is in the workshop and he is working on the dining nook bench. I'm gonna go downstairs, see how it's coming along. Hi! Hi! Whoa! It's four inches shy of 10 feet. Wow! What? Because there's four compartments yeah. out of four doors. I but was hoping we could do just two because we're gonna do two cushions. Two cushions, and I'd love it if these hinged upwards. And I think having four is kind of like cumbersome to like mm -hmm. fold up each time, whereas if there's two, we hinge it. Yeah, yeah, so just like cut this in half, give it a little bit of room, yeah. and then we'll just, just connect these two doors together. Okay. Graham and I talked through the bench lids for storage. Right now he's cut them into four pieces. I think it would be better as two seats that lift open to reveal storage. So he's gonna make one lid per bench instead of four. We talked through where the molding would go, the size of molding we were gonna use. We also talked about the height of the bench and where the beadboard would fall if you were sitting on the bench. We don't want anyone's head banging against the shelf. Graham, get excited. 
This is from Tonic Living. So this is it, the white side. So nice. Isn't that so cool? This is perfect. It's got like zero stretch. Yeah. So it will retain its shape. I was hoping you would comment more on the design choice. No, the rather design than... is very nice. Okay. Tonic Living is my favorite place to find fabric and cushions. Their cushion inserts are the only cushion inserts I will use in my own home. They're so comfy and soft and fluffy. And their fabric selection is just curated perfectly. Great work. Can't wait to see it all come together. Thank you. Okay. Hi guys, it's the next day and I am in the Team AG workshop getting ready to paint the bench with Graham. It's the perfect color for this space. Dark, hint of green, more gray. I think it's gonna look really good on the bench. I wanna show you what the bench looks like. To prep the bench for painting, Graham caulked the seams and sanded everything down and primed the entire bench with a shellac based primer. Incredible. Okay, and this is the paint color. So, so good. Does that mean it's green to you? It's giving a bit gray. Yeah, like look at the bucket. I don't like it. It's not the first time you've said that about this paint. This color is supposed to be the beadboard at the back, the molding, possibly the wall. So yeah. I gotta go back to square one. That's tr a dramatic clipping. This, this is drums. Yeah. Okay, Alana has arrived. Hi. Maybe like because you've seen it over top of white, like I have fresh eyes just coming in. Like that looks like exactly That's what you're the paint swatch. Yeah. I was expecting it to be more like a little bit more green. To be more green in the Milano board. Like it's just it's like charcoal with like just a little hint of green. I need to walk out of the workshop and come back in. Yeah. Cleanse your eyes. Yeah. I'm, yeah. That's a great idea. I actually do see green. But well, what's confusing is that in the paint bucket, it looks gray. It's also probably gonna dry a little bit more green too. Okay, Graham's gonna keep painting the bench. I'm gonna check in tomorrow, see how the color's looking as it dries. Also search for a backup and reassess at the end of the week. It's the moment of truth. Is the bench color the right color? And if not, I have to find a backup and the makeover is next week. So yeah, fingers crossed that it doesn't look gray. Let's call Graham. I can't wait to see the bench. Hoping and praying it's the right color. It's definitely changed overnight. That's what I like to hear. Because when we painted that test board at my house, it definitely had green undertones. Are you ready? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> I'm ready, I'm ready. Boom. I, I think that looks amazing. That reads green. It's a sophisticated green. Totally. And that's the idea. And I was thinking about it all night last night and I was like, you know what? We've never used a color like it before. Let's just go for it. So. It's very moody. Cool. Thanks, Graham. Okay. See you later. Success. Thank goodness. The paint dried just as it was supposed to. <laughs> Gray with green undertones. I'm excited to experiment. This is a moody dining room after all. That is relief. So we've confirmed this paint is actually indeed perfect. I didn't need to have a bit of a paint meltdown. Graham is finishing it with three coats of paint and is now moving on to the seat cushions. For the cushions, Graham used a scrap piece of foam that we had from an old project. The foam is three inches thick, super high density foam. So he cut it in half like a piece of bread and used the two one and a half inch pieces for the bench cushions. Instead of upholstering a bench cushion that floats on top of the bench, we went a little bit of an easier route, but it looks really, really good as well. Graham upholstered the fabric and secured it directly to each lid. To do this, he used an air compressor with a staple gun. A tip here is to make sure the fabric is taut without pulling it too hard. Basically, you wanna stretch the fabric evenly and uniformly as you staple so that the pattern doesn't warp. Your instinct is probably gonna be to stretch it, but you just wanna do it very gently and carefully. To hide the unfinished seam under the seat, Graham used decorative trim and you don't even know, all the staples are under there. Hey guys, it is our prep day. Very exciting. We have all of our boxes in the nook. I'm gonna show you the nook again, as I always do, just like walk you through the space. Don't mind all of our stuff. 
this is the reality of shooting guys this is their kitchen and then it opens up to this den which is going to be the dining nook they've cleared all their stuff out they're ready for a fresh start we are just going to start unboxing all of our product oh my gosh wow those are the sponsors ASMR me yeah baby do you feel it? <laughs> There's currently some drama happening. We have brought up two parts of our DIY bench. The beadboard panels and the shelf are still downstairs in the parking lot beside Graham's car. If anyone wants to steal it, that's exactly where it is. Yeah, I'm really nervous that they're gone, but anyways. The concierge won't let us bring up the panels because apparently we were supposed to book the elevator, which I totally understand. There's already padding in the elevator, so we were like, great, we're not gonna like cause any issues. The padding's on the elevator, awesome. But the elevator was booked when Hannah and her partner tried to book it. Yeah. The concierge isn't letting, letting us bring up the two panels in the elevator. So, what is the game plan? I think we should do the heist, to be honest. Alana has a plan for a heist. Graham's idea is to bribe. My idea is just to... Beg. Beg. We're ready to do whatever it takes, but those panels have to get up here or else there's no makeover. This truly is the real behind the scenes. I don't know what you guys think watching at home, if it looks like super glamorous or maybe it looks like it just comes together really smoothly, but these are all the roadblocks we deal with every time we do a makeover. You know what, actually? I'm gonna show you a literal roadblock that happens every makeover when we're shooting in a small space. Um, if anyone wants to go to the bathroom, that's not possible because all our tools, we got a ladder there, a vacuum, a literal roadblock. This is what it's like. One minute, 37 seconds later. Oh my gosh, you guys did it. It's here. Was it the heist route it was. or? Was it? Yeah. You did a heist? This is genius. <laughs> Yay, Alana. Yeah. The cops are gonna. No one was at the concierge <laughs> desk, so we just like popped down to the garage. We just, like, and... Should we? <laughs> we just we just like the door didn't even close. We were so quick. <gasps> Good wow, job. good job, guys. That's enough, that was Alana. 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 It was your idea. I've unboxed everything, cleared everything out of the room, and now Graham and I are going to rough fit the beadboard and the bench in here. We're not gonna install it today, but I wanna make sure everything fits. I need to figure out the position of the wall sconces. I also have to decide if I wanna paint. There's gonna be like probably a foot or the strip of white above the paneling. I'm gonna see if I wanna leave it white like the rest of the walls or paint it the same color as the beadboard and the bench. Installing it, but I feel like I could be in the coolest restaurant in downtown Toronto, and it's like leaning against the wall. Yeah. Should we open the restaurant? <laughs> no. <laughs> Graham is gonna lift up this panel for me just so I can see where it's gonna sit on the wall. We gave ourselves extra length. The bench is gonna cover a lot of the beadboard at the bottom, so we can really kind of put this as high as we want. So like about. There. Okay, this looks great. We definitely need to paint. Like, there's no question in my mind. It's gonna look so, so awesome if the whole wall is just this dark and moody color. The good news is we only have to paint just a bit of the wall. We can throw the laser level up, do a straight crisp line with painter's tape, and then just fill it in. Next up, Graham and I are building the shelving units. These shelving units are so perfect. They are gonna sit on either side of the wall. You can see these little alcoves here and they're just like actually the perfect fit. They're using vertical space so they get lots of storage up that wall. They can place things on top and there's even little cupboards on the bottom. We are done for the day. I can't wait to see this room come together. This color already looks so good on the wall. 
I will see you guys tomorrow for reveal day. Hey guys, it is reveal day. I woke up so, so excited to see this room come together. So as you guys saw yesterday, we painted, we did some preliminary holes in the walls for the beadboard to make sure install would go smoothly today. And now Graham and I are gonna start by doing some wiring. We're turning uh, hardwired wall sconces into plug-in wall sconces. And we're gonna feed the cord behind the beadboard. Alternatively, you could use puck lights and do the puck light hack. But for this space, I need bright lights. This is our dining nook. I wanna make sure they have enough adequate lighting. And so I wanna use LED light bulbs. So we have to then turn these hardwire sconces into plug-in sconces. So we are using lamp wire. I need to figure out how much of this we need to go from that wall sconce to this outlet down here. You're probably wondering, but how are they gonna plug the light in and access the outlet? Don't you guys worry, we have a solve for that. Stay tuned. So I'm gonna make sure there's extra length so it reaches the sconce once we install that. And then I'm just putting this in this little channel back here. The painter's tape works, but I would recommend using duct tape or packing tape. Now it is time to install this beautiful beadboard and I wanna walk you through how Graham created this beadboard. Graham used a prefabricated beadboard panel. You can actually get these in four feet by eight feet lengths at your local home improvement store. Graham cut the panel in half and used the four feet by four feet sections to span the 10 foot wall. The cool thing about these panels is that they're pre-primed and ready to paint. For the shelf, Graham made it out of scrap MDF baseboards and used a thicker piece of MDF for the shelf topper. To shape it, Graham used a rounded bit on the router. Graham secured the shelf to the beadboard from the back side of the panel using wood screws and construction adhesive. After he painted the beadboard and shelf, he applied a coat of polyurethane to the top of the shelf for extra durability. To secure the beadboard to the wall, we're using concrete screws. This is a concrete wall, but these screws are the real deal. They're very heavy duty. Next, we're installing the second panel in the exact same way we did the first. Whew. Like that makes me feel powerful. Before hanging the wall sconces on the wall, I am patching the screw holes that we made to attach the speedboard panel to the wall with putty and we are gonna sand and paint over it later. So the gauge of lamp wire was too large for those plugs. Graham found an awesome solution. He is using a plug he just had in his kit and he's wiring both sconce lamp wires to that same plug so they can just plug in together to the wall. So now we're taking that white cord and we are wiring it to the wall sconce. And this is how the sconces are gonna become working lights. Science. Is electri electricity a science? Yeah, don't include that. <laughs> okay, I want to hide the cords with cord covers. So I'm measuring how much of the cord cover I need and just cutting it with these industrial scissors. <laughs> now we're talking. You're probably wondering, but how are they gonna turn them on if the bench is gonna be blocking this outlet? This is where this wireless light controller comes in. I got this off Amazon, I'll link it down below. So I'm plugging the sconce cord into here. And then the idea is it comes with this remote. So the remote should turn the lights on. <laughs> oh, I didn't think it was gonna work, but it does. Why do I ever do this, Graham? I could do this all day. It's time to use acrylic latex sealant to just make this little edge seamless. And if you're confused, acrylic latex sealant is caulking. <laughs> but the internet doesn't like how I say it. People freak out. So I'm calling it acrylic latex sealant, which is what it is. We're finishing the sides off with trim. I have no words. Like I, I have, I just have no words. This is incredible. It's like truly like a little restaurant. That's what it feels like. Stunning. 
So as you guys know, there's so much storage in each bench. I knew I wanted some sort of handle or like hook to be able to lift these up to make the storage easily accessible, but I didn't want anyone to feel the knob or hook or pull when they were sitting down. So I'm using these leather pulls. Not only are they gonna look so good, but they're gonna allow this bench to lift right up. And we also secured the bench to the wall just to make sure it's not moving around when people are sitting on it. This is ED Ellen DeGeneres. I have wanted to use a pendant like this for so long. Yes, this room is small. Yes, this light is big, but this room is just calling for a statement light and statement light this is. Get rid of this light. Stupid ugly light. This light is even better than I imagined. Next, we are painting over the caulking and cord covers to make everything less noticeable. Whoa, that literally just disappeared. <laughs> it was really cool. That was wild. While everything behind me dries, I am going to lay out this beautiful rug. Jute is durable, which makes it really great for a dining area. Please note that if you have kids, you might not want to put a rug under your table, but I always think it really makes a dining space feel complete. One of my favorite things ever when it comes to design is mixing and matching patterns. These are two totally different patterns, and yet it creates this really styled and sophisticated look in here, which is why I wanted to go with the checker rug. It looks so, so good. So we are bringing in the dining table. I'm really excited about this piece because this is from Article and it's actually a desk, but because this dining nook is on the smaller side, the desk fits perfectly and really looks like it could be a dining table. This table has storage because it's a desk. I've put the table facing out so they can use it as a little bar cart area. So cool. I'm bringing in those two shelving units that we built earlier from Duclair, and I'm hiding the router in the bottom. We just drilled a quick hole in the backside of it so we could feed the cords through. Look at that. Woo! This little nook is coming together. I am obsessed with these chairs. These are from Eternity Modern. I'm gonna link them down below. They are just timeless, but so statement. I think, I think we're on to finishing touches. I'm adding some art on top of these shelves. We purchased these downloadable prints from Etsy and put them in thrifted frames, a very affordable art solution. I'm using command strips to make sure they are secured on the wall. Adding a small vase with some pompous grass, placing a drapey plant that Hannah already had. I'm placing candlesticks in different heights. The different levels make the styling look much more dynamic. Adding a cute brass bird that Hannah already had. Moving on to styling the shelves. I'm styling these with the books they already had and another cute bird trinket. A wood tray on the second shelf. I'm placing their bar on the top shelf. A vase with twigs. And a basket they could keep napkins in or anything else they wanna hide. Placing faux sheepskins on the back of the dining chairs. These beautiful cushions lining the bench for extra comfort. These are from Tonic Living. I'm hanging this mirror that they had that has a cool antique look to it. It works perfectly in this space. And finally, I'm adding this beautiful vase with greens in the middle of the table. It's time to bring in Hannah and Amin for the reveal. I am so, so excited to reveal the space to them. We completely transform this. Let's see their reaction. Like right there, that's perfect. Okay, before you guys open your eyes, can you walk me through what the space looked like before? It was like unused <laughs> office and random furniture. You requested a dining nook. I am so, so excited for you guys to see this. On the count of three, one, <laughs> two, three. Damn. Oh my God. Okay. Whoa. Wait, what? I'm not expecting this Look at, at that all. table. Oh 
Oh my god. Wait, this is amazing. Oh my god. I love the band. The rug? Everything. That's crazy. Okay, let's go sit. <laughs> Look at you. I love the wall. And these That's pillows. Amazing. Right? That's wow. amazing. Even the light oh. picture. <laughs> wow. This is amazing. I can't believe this is real. <laughs> Still like mind blown. I, I, I don't know what to say. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Honestly, to everybody. Dinner parties? Yeah. Many. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Great. Oh. <laughs> Thanks for being here, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Love you. Bye. Rare footage of Alexandra reading the instructions. You got it? On a plate, it's. Classic. Okay.